Happy Sabbath, church. May we all stand for our call to worship. He is Lord. Crystal. 
the rivers will sparkle into the light. Heaven's beauty will, will share, but they will never compare to the moment he welcomed you, he welcomed me. Glory's angel will all step aside when he greets me or he greets you with open wild. He will step down from his, uh, from his throne just to welcome you face to face. And he will say, welcome to heaven, my child. Welcome to heaven, my child. You have run the race. You have kept the faith. Welcome to heaven, my child. Don't you long to hear that from the Lord? Be faithful. We will hear it one day soon. Amen. Amen. <laughs> At this time, we'll all repeat the fourth commandment from Exodus 20, 11 and to 11. Amen. I get so excited to get to hear visualize the Lord calling me and say, Welcome to heaven, my child. Because we get weary down there. We get weary down here. And we long to hear our Savior welcome us to his glorious home, to our glorious home. Let's all say it together. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any. Not thy daughter, not thy manservant, not thy maidservant, not thy cattle, not thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is therein, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord and the Lord. One day soon we'll have that eternal rest. So be faithful, my brethren, and stay faithful. Amen. You may be seated. We'll now have our announcement. Morning and happy Sabbath, Baytown United. I see that we have a lot of visitors today, so if you see them, please give them a warm welcome and welcome them to Baytown United, where the love of Jesus flows. Our church announcements. Our prayer meeting will be held on Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. The subject is the Ministry of Angels, Part 3. AY Council Meeting. There will be a meeting today after morning church service in the main sanctuary for all Adventist youth council leaders. Pastor Williams is away today at the funeral service for the late Elder Charles Cunningham. Elder Cunningham served as a pastor and educator before he retired in this conference. Please remember the Cunningham family in your prayers today. Our prayer and fasting is next Sabbath, August 27th. Our Baytown United Church calendar. Our community service food pantry distribution day is on Friday, August 26th. Our prayer and fasting Sabbath is August 27th. Our men's weekend summit is August 26th through the 28th. And our church board meeting is on September 4th. Our adventure family retreat is on September 23rd through the 25th. Please see Sister Mary John or Elder Terry Gibson for registration form and cost as soon as possible. Our children's ministry team, the Sabbath School Leadership Training for September 8th and 9th is now free, but we still need to register for the training. Save the date. On August 26th through the 28th at Lone Star Camp in Athens, Texas is our Men's Weekend Summit. The summit theme is Stronger Together. Look for the complete details soon, and if you have any thoughts or questions, please see Brother Monroe's. Our Voice of Hope Bible Revival is coming to Baytown on Saturday, September 10th at 7 p.m. and continuing Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday evenings on 7, at 7 p.m. 
If you'd like to give out a card, please see the ushers. Our August birthdays that are coming up, Denise Lerenon, Day. I'm sorry if I pronounced this wrong, on the 17th, Helen Beru on the 18th, Melanie Francis on the 21st, Sherry Hodge on the 27th, Keegan John on the 27th, and Thorold Gibson on the 28th. Our August anniversaries, Brother Daniel and Sister Helen Beru on the 22nd. Our sick and shut-in, Sister Leonor Bishop, Sister Ruth Brown, Sister Efren Mitchell, Sister Liz Percival, Sister Jacqueline Transcoso, and Sister Helen Brew. I'd like to end with the thought of the week. The idea of holding Bible readings is a heaven-born idea and opens the way to put hundreds of young men and women into the field to do an important work, which otherwise would not have been done. Messages to Young People, page 220. Thank you and have a wonderful Sabbath. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord that you have been allowed to wake up this morning. Praise the Lord that this is the Sabbath day. This is a day of rest, a day you don't have to worry about the work, a day that you don't have to worry and stress yourself, but you can concentrate on the word of God. You can concentrate on the words that we'll be singing today. So as we praise, as we sing these songs today, and as you look at the board, please show your love for God by lifting up your voices in praise.
splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see Is love. 
Jesus on his throne, riches and glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase, more of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his scripture reading with me will read responsively, okay? Mark 5 verse 1 through 10 because I read not that by myself. Alright? So I will go first and then you follow. Can you put on the screen please? Okay. Because I want them to read responsively. Alright. And they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Rene- Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with change. in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, we are many. Amen. We serve a powerful God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his words and to apply to our hearts and to know the powerful God that we serve. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will call on Gillian Williams to present us before God that she can intercede and petition to God on our behalf and we can also do the same on the behalf of others on our behalf so God can answer our prayer and reveal himself to each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. That is all me. Now dear Lord as we pray take our hearts and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound may our lives be transformed by your love may our souls be refreshed from above at this moment let people everywhere join us now as we come to you in prayer i will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Father God, this morning, we present ourselves to you, O Lord. We are here once again to lay our troubles at your feet to be your footstool. 
Father, we know who you are. You are the great I am, the great physician. You are who you are. You are our great God, the only sovereign God. And we bow, we fall prostrate at your feet this morning. Father, bringing all our troubles to you. And also, Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for last night lying down and this morning waking up. We want to thank you for taking us safely through another week. We want to thank you, Lord, for sparing our lives, that we are able to come here to sing praises and lift your name on high. And so for this, we want to say thank you, God. Thank you. With the, the outcome could have been different. But we thank you, Lord, that we are here. We may have aches and pains, Father, but we are still here where we can, where we can sing praises to your name. Father, we pray for our pastor as he is away. Father, we pray that you would give him safe traveling mercies. We pray for the, grief, the grieving family, the bereaved family this morning. We pray that you would comfort them, Father. And, and Father, we pray for all those who are here, each and every family that is represented here. We pray that you would touch their hearts. Those who are sick, oh God, we pray that you would touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. We pray for those, oh Lord, who may have aches and pains, who may have some kind of illness, Lord. We pray, oh God, that as the great physician, oh God, that you would come by here and touch them this morning, Father. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you would come by and comfort them, oh God. Help them to understand, oh God, that one day soon, if we live the way you say we should live, that we would see each other once again. Father, oh God, this morning, we pray, oh God, that you would come by this place. Come by this place building this morning. Touch each and every family, oh God. Father, those who are weak, oh God. Those who are sad this morning, Father. Those who have loved, lost the love they had, oh God. Those who have never learned to love you well this morning, Jesus. We pray that you would speak to their hearts and that they would surrender their lives to you, oh God. We see the things that are happening in this world, oh God. Soon and very soon you're going to make your appearance, oh Father. You've given us every opportunity to make our call and election sure this morning, oh God. You have given us your word. You have sent your son. What more, oh God? Tell me what more can Jesus do? Father, this morning, oh God, we surrender our lives to you. And we pray, oh God, that you would come by here this morning. Bless the speaker this morning, Father. You know him. You know everything about him. You know even the numbers of hair on his head. And this morning we pray that you would touch him. Anoint him this morning with your Holy Spirit. And as he brings the message of God, may it break each and every one of our hearts. And if there's anything in us that is not worthy of you, that his, the word that is presented will help us to surrender it to you today. Father, this morning, we thank you again. We praise you. We glorify you. We lift you up this morning. We pray for all those who are on our sick and shut in list this morning, Father. We pray that you would pass by their households and touch each and every one of them. Bless their family members this morning. Speak to their hearts also, Father. Those, oh God, who have, who have not made that decision, oh God, to come, taste and see that you are good. Those who have not made that decision to come and take up their cross and follow you this morning. We pray, oh Father, that they would surrender their hearts to you before it is too late. Because we know, oh God, soon and very soon we are going to see the King. This morning, Father, if there's anything at all, anything, Father, that we have failed to ask of you this morning, may you fail not to grant it unto us, we pray. In Jesus' almighty name, amen.
Ceci. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Today I will be reading from James 5, verse 14 to 16. But first, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for, for coming together, or thank you for letting us come together to have this children's story, Lord. Help it to go good, Lord. Bless us all, Lord. Help us from all our sicknesses that we may have. In Jesus' name, amen. Is any sick among you? Among you, Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing you with oil in the name of Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So, has anyone they been sick or, or had anyone that's been sick lately? Or you wanna go? Yeah, my mom was sick. Oh well. When people get sick, you have to pray over them and ask them to pray and ask God to help them get better. Anyone else? Had anyone? Okay, because one day I was sick like a couple of days ago and I wasn't feeling too well. But then when I prayed it to God, then I started feeling better and then I got well. So that's my story. To so now, who wants to pray? No one wants to pray? Okay, you can pray. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Please help you heal everybody that's sick, that is in their bed. Please help them. Please help everybody that doesn't know you. Please help you help them. Amen. Okay, have a good, have a good Sabbath. Amen. That's wisdom. I believe in the power of prayer. And this is wisdom from a child. If anybody's sick, they need to call the elders and pray and believe. God have the power to do it. Do we serve a mighty God, don't we? We need to do that more often. Don't wait until you're dying bed and call for your last sacrament. You can call on the name of the Lord. Sometimes we, we try everything else. And when everything else fails, then we try Jesus. So why don't we try Jesus first? Why don't we try Jesus first? I'm a witness to the power of prayer. You all know it. And I know all of us have experienced it. So let us take the wisdom from this child that used this text today as for the children corner. So earlier on, before I go into the offering, I welcome you and I know and I told you to visualize how the Lord will welcome you and step off his throne and welcome you. We're looking forward for that. But today I want to acknowledge some of our visitors. I see I have a few visitors. Can you at the back, sit in at the back, can you all stand and tell us your name and where you're visiting from?
Amen. Welcome. This is the way the love of Jesus flows. So after church, make sure you all reach out and welcome. Welcome. There. I see another two young lady be, be in front of you. Can all our visitors stand, please? Can all our visitors stand? Amen. We are so happy to have you all visiting with us. So make yourself at home. You are not a stranger. You are a child of God and we are all brothers and sisters. So make sure you feel welcome. And please come again. All right? And we love you all. Okay? Make sure you all reach out to them before they leave today. Amen? Okay. Offering time. We all can participate. Malachi 3.10. It's been a long time. I don't use that text. Because we all know the text. But today the Lord kind of prompt my heart to bring that text up. It says 3.10, Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Did you say bring ye some of the tithe? I can't hear you. It said what? All the tithe in the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now where if serve the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. Did Marilyn Mitchell say that? Who said that? Do you trust the Lord? Well, take the Lord at his words. So when the Lord said, prove me, prove the Lord. Don't prove me, prove the Lord. And David said, he was young. He became old. And he never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging for bread. You can do more with 90% than 100%. I guarantee you that. May the deacon come forward to receive the morning tithe and offering. God has been faithful. He is generous. Let us not be unfaithful and stingy with God because he promised blessings. Let's bow our heads. Holy Father, we thank you. We bless your name because you have been good to us. You have given us admonition to be faithful and to bring all the tithe. So this morning, some of us have and some of us have not any to give. But we ask that you bless those that have, bless those that don't have. And help us always to be faithful because you are faithful to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I would like to also take the time to welcome Kirk and the family. I'm happy to see you all. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> I wish that was a welcome back. But we're always happy to see you all. And all people are welcome. Thank you. When I worship when I lift up my hands, I acknowledge I am yours to command. I surrender everything that I am when I worship. When I worship, when I worship, when I bow at your feet, revelation of your glory, I seek not my way. But your will I seek when I worship, when I worship. It's not for the things that you do, not the trials you brought me through, not because you're so faithful and true. But when I worship, it's just because I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. When I worship, when I lift up my hands, I acknowledge I am yours to come and I surrender everything that I am when I worship, when I worship, when I worship. When I bow with your feet, revelation of your glory, I seek not my way, Lord, but your will I seek 
when I worship, when I worship, it's not for the things that you do, not the trials you brought me through, not because you're so faithful and true, but when I worship, it's just because I love you. you because I love you. Praise the Lord. Now is the time that we have been waiting to receive the bread of life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the Lord have a sign and the joy to present the message today. So as he waiting to come and present the message to us, let us prepare our heart to receive the message that will have receptive heart. Pray for him and pray for us. Or pray for yourself so that you will receive the message today. And also Jesus says, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. So today we have a beautiful young lady, Abri Howell, will present us with this special music. And after Abri Howell, the next voice you will hear is Ella Joy. Yeah, he, him, he, he, her. <laughs> Good morning and happy Sabbath. Today the song I'll be singing is called Look What You've Done. thought I was too broken, now I see you were breaking new ground inside of me. Standing in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all the roots up. I feel you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah. Look what you've done. Look what you've done in me. You spoke your truth into the lies that left my heart believe. Look at me now, look how you've made me new Oh, the enemy did everything that he could do Oh, but look what you've done On the cross, in the grave, with the stone rolled away All my death still was paid Look what you've done in my heart, in my mind in my life, my hands lifted high, I'm singing, look what you've done, look what you've done in me, you spoke your truth into the lies and let my heart believe, look at me now, look how you made me do, oh the enemy did everything that he could do. 
Oh, but look what you've done On the cross in a grave With a stone rolled away On my debt it was paid Look what you've done In my heart, in my mind, in my soul, in my life With my hands lifted high, I'm singing Look what you've done Amen. Thank you so much, Aubrey, for your ministry and music. This is a finished product of what Jesus can do for you and me. Thank you, Aubrey. I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, it is always nerve-wracking, as I always say, before you speak, it is always nerve-wracking because there's a battle between me and God what is it that you will have me to speak on and I tell you it goes all the way down to you step up to the podium <laughs> if you have an experience we need to get you uh, sign you up to preach and you, so you can experience it amen I believe that everyone in here wants to be like Jesus. I believe it. I believe it. Let us pray. Father, help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the message today is, Are You Ready? Simple, right? Are you ready? It comes to mind, I was thinking about the message. I said, Lord, what would you have me to prepare? What meal would you want to be served? And so we were, we were, we were going back and forth. And so I got the meal first. So I'm just giving it back to you. Okay? I got it first. And when we look at it, we have a crusade or a uh, evangelistic meeting coming up in September. Is that correct? Is that correct? Oh, just two of y'all know. I want y'all to know in September, we have a crusade starting. It says, Voice of. <laughs> Who? this is going to be a hard crowd here. Let me catch y'all up. In September, we are having a crusade. It's called Voice of Hope. Yeah, yeah. Y'all saw it on the screen a little while ago. A voice of Hope. And so, um, and so here we are. Why are we having a crusade? Why are we having a meeting? It's not a trick question. It is because God has called us. And it's to his marvelous light that we are to be stewards of his word to share with other individuals about the love of Jesus. That's why we're having a meeting. Are you ready? Some of you are quick to answer yes. Just, you know, just like Peter did when Jesus came to him. He went, wait, wait, Jesus, Jesus. So, Peter, you're going to deny me before the cock goes three times. No, Lord, I would never do that. You've been too good for me, for me to deny you. It ain't going to happen. Yes, Peter. You. 
The question is, are you ready? We look in our memory text of uh, Mark chapter 5. And it says that they came over unto the other side of the sea. Into the country of Gadarenes. Let me pause there first. Because we have to go back. We have to go back and set the stage. We have to go back and set the stage. We got to go all the way back to chapter 4. Okay? Mark chapter 4. But, Ernie, can you help me out just a little bit? I, I, need, I need you to be part of one of the disciples in the boat. Can you do that? Can you do that with Jesus? Can you do that? Just stay right there. Stay right there. See? You say, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Let me see. Uh, Kirk, Kirk, I need you to be a disciple in the boat with Jesus. Can you do that? All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me see. Let me see. Al, 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 I need you to be, <laughs> help me out. I need you to be a disciple in the boat with Jesus. Just one. Because you, look, you are a disciple of Christ. You want to be there, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see Machuca ducking his head. Machuca, can you be in the boat with him? All right. We got our boat full. We have four disciples in the boat. There might be more than that. But we're going to just for illustration purposes we are going to use four of them in a boat here it was just a few moments earlier Jesus was on the other side of the sea what was he doing what was he doing he was teaching that's right you Bible scholars thank you he was teaching to a multitude as a matter of fact, the multitude was so large that Jesus had to get in a boat and go out just a little bit so he could see the people that were out there. You, you with me? And, and Deacon and, and Disciple Ernie was in it, Disciple Al and Disciple Kirk and Disciple Machuca was right there with Jesus. Jesus was actually teaching. He was actually teaching uh, with parables. Parables were the short stories that would connect with the people. He would, get a, he would connect with farmers and deal with seeds and sowing and all, all these different types of things. Notice the crowd. The crowd was calm. They were so intentive to Jesus' teaching. Every word that Jesus was speaking, they were absorbed. You got me? You got me? You're with me? All right. Jesus was teaching because he said, by hearing and seeing, he was hoping that they would release their sins. Oh, that was the voice of hope crusade. You got it? Because anytime Jesus spoke, it was a voice of hope. He, he, that's all he did was deliver hope to the people. And there it was, as you can see, the multitude of people. As time went on, Jesus says, okay, let's go ahead and send them away. Because we need to go to the other side. So the disciples in the boat, uh, Disciple Kirk and Disciple Ernie and Disciple Al and, and Disciple Machuca, they thought it was a little bit strange because here is a multitude of people. How many people can we baptize from this multitude? He's talking about shit, send them away. What in the world? Send them away to go to the other side. 
Disciple Ernie said, Ooh, Jesus is going to the side. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Disciple Kirk said, Oh, I, 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 I know. Uh, that's where the guy is, right? That guy. You, you know that guy? And Ernie said, Gordine, 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 Gordine. Yeah. Ernie said, what, 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 what guy? Al, you know that guy I've been telling you about? The one that was running around all crazy? He, he man, they cannot chain this guy down. Day and night, he's crying, yelling, screaming. You know him? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Man, Ernie, I thought you were playing. Is that the place? Yeah. That's the place. Deacon Machuca was a little bit surprised because, uh, because, because he thought we were supposed to be spending pretty much most of the evening with the multitude. And here it is, Jesus shut it down. But then he began to wonder, he began to say, you know what? We're going to follow Jesus the way he take us. So guys, it's going to be okay. Meanwhile, uh, a disciple I was fretting. He was like, ah, uh, that's real? Uh, did you get Ernie, disciple Ernie? Is that real? Uh, yeah, it is real. He said, it's <laughs> We'll, we'll be okay because when we get to the other side, we didn't set a precedence of being staying out in the water on the boat. <laughs> we won't have to go on land. Besides that, oh, disciple earning, besides, besides that, man, do you know there are so many pigs over there? There are thousands upon thousands of pigs. There's no way Jesus would step on that filthy ground with all of those pigs. So we'll be okay. Y'all follow me? Y'all follow me? I'm trying to make a connection here. So here they are. They're reassuring themselves. They're questioning what Jesus is all about. And there they Begin to go to the other side, and Jesus, being so worn down and tired, he went and got a pillow and he went to, to sleep. And the disciples was there; they they begin to feel a little breeze coming up. Say, "Whew, that's a pretty nice breeze, cause that so it was pretty warm early today." Thank you, Jesus. And as began, the wind began to pick up. Uh, the disciples' eyes began to lift. And they began to look around that, hey, this is not just no little Caribbean breeze here. Uh, this, this is a little bit more than a Caribbean breeze. And, and they begin to feel the waves become larger and larger and the bible says that the waves begin to fill the boat and there was a panic that set out amongst the disciples and the disciple Al cried out where's jesus and and then and the brother heard said, oh lord lord and they found jesus Down to sleep under the bow. Now, I just spoke about how Jesus ministered to the multitude. Now he's ministering to the disciples because their fear has caused them to become fearful, which means they were crying. Ah, yeah, yeah. I knew I should have stayed home. I knew I should have stayed home. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. 
Jesus got up, he rebuked the waves and the wind, and he called out, you of little faith. Jesus could be present right there, but it does not eliminate the winds, the waves, the storms that are coming your way. But it's sure good having Jesus in a boat with you when you're going through it. And he calmed the winds, the waves. And whew, whew, we could start breathing a little bit more, Kirk. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. They continued on their journey. And as they approached the other side, they saw the mountains. Remember, that's where the, uh, the Jane God was running around, right? In the mountains and tombs, right? And so far, all the disciples perked up and said, I'm so glad we want to stay offshore a little bit. We want to minister to people, but we don't want to go. And lo and behold, when they looked out there, they saw all those pigs. I, I said, look, I told you, look at all those pigs. He said, wow, thousands of pigs, thousands of pigs. I know Jesus is not going to set foot over there with all those pigs, all those unclean pigs. He's not going to set foot on there. Jesus says, come on. Pull up right up here. And the disciples are like, oh. Ooh. And he came up to the shore and Jesus stepped out. Disciple Ernie says, there he is. <laughs> There he is. Because <laughs> Al just got finished the last time. Al just got finished <laughs> from his cry from the winds and the waves. You know, you know when you cry real, real hard, you have that deep cry, and you got that last one. <laughs> That's what Al just did. And oh, my goodness, he ain't come. He's coming, y'all. He's coming. He's coming. Come to get us. This man was demon possessed. And when he saw Jesus, so I'm going to release y'all from the boat. I'm going to release y'all from the boat. Y'all got the picture? Y'all got the picture? The reason why I put them in the boat is because, you know what? We do things like that. Even when Jesus, we become scared, even though we know Jesus. And there he was. He came running when he saw Jesus. And the Bible says that he fell at Jesus' feet and worshipped. Wow. Here it is. This man was possessed by the devil. Where he cried out day and night, night and day, in the mountains or at the tombs. He would scare people. Because he was demon possessed. What made him? Run to Jesus to worship. Because they're enemies, remember? Remember? Could it be the man was so tired of being possessed by something that was inferior to what God had that he himself got the courage and says, you know what? There's no devil in what going to stop me to getting to Jesus. There's no devil is going to stop me 
from getting to Jesus because I'm tired of cutting myself. I'm tired of ripping my clothes. I'm tired of smelling like this. Are you tired? I'm talking about all you ready. Here we have a nice scene. You know, when, when, we, when we have our crusades, what we like to see is the crowd that's like the, the multitude on the sea where they all sitting down. Yes, Jesus. We don't like to see this man who's running all crazy, ripped up, all scarred up, stinky. Be honest with yourselves. Are you ready? Many of us, I say, how many of us want to be like Jesus? Everybody, how many want to be like Jesus? To go to the man, the tombs where these people are running around with their minds all shredded, can't think straight. They don't smell like you. They don't look like you. How many of you are ready? And there it was. Jesus asked the question, who are you? Because there, there, there's two things going on here. There was a man who needed deliverance. And then there was a devil who needed to be expelled. Both understood that Jesus was Lord. He was the savior of the world. Both of them knew that. That's why the man ran and clinged to Jesus' feet. Why the demons tremble, Lord Jesus, Son of God, please, please, please continue with us nicely. I told you all about those pigs on a hill. Guess what? The, the demons asked Jesus, can we go into them? And you know the story well. The pigs ran off the cliff because they didn't even want demons in them. They were to die. This was Jesus doing ministry. Yet he was over on the shore with the multitude. He ministered to the disciples in the ship when when, because of their, their lack of faith. And here it is, this demon-possessed man. Have you ever heard of Jesus going out of his way to save one? One man, Jesus had to cross that whole lake after preaching and teaching all day long, tired, worn. But it was important for him to go to that one. Are you ready to be like Jesus? It's so easy to say, oh, he, yeah, I'm ready to be like Jesus. If I were to say, hey, we need some help with this crusade. Um, we need some nightly, people nightly to prepare a meal. <laughs> yeah, I do it. That's good, right? We need somebody nightly to, to usher. Huh? Okay, okay. We need somebody to sing for Jesus. Ah, yeah. We need somebody to pray. 
need somebody going out and knock on doors. Well, you know, I, I'm a pretty good cook. I'm going to be setting the meal, the tables. So <laughs> we need somebody to go down and, and, and speak to this gentleman or this lady who is not quite right. How many takers do we have? I'm talking about being like Jesus. Are you ready? Jesus went from one side of the coast to the other side of the coast for a man that was just ripping him around. We would have written him off. There is no hope for him. He's been acting like that all all these years, look at, look at how, ooh, look at those cuts, all the infected, ooh. You know I'm right. And we say we are ready. Mercy. To save a little bit of time, if we would continue to reading, you would notice that Jesus individually went and touched a dead girl and raised her up, right? If you would continue on reading, you would come across the passage where this lady who had this issue for 10 years, Physicians couldn't help her. They took all of her money. She was an outcast because of her condition. Individually, he ministered to them. And he's doing it here today. He is ministering to you. Are you ready? That's the question that came to me. Joey, are you ready? You're talking about a crusade, you're talking about a crusade, we do crusades. How is this one going to be different? How is it going to be different? How do we get out of our comfort zones? Yes, you might be a cook, but Jesus is calling you to something different in his ministry. Yes, you might be a singer. He is calling you different in his ministry. Can you hear him? Or you just called it, oh, no, this is, this is my ministry right here. I, I'm good. Look at all the mother folks. Where is he calling you? I ain't going to keep you. Last week, we had the privilege of taking the young people to San Antonio with the drum corps. They were playing for Jesus. And boy, did they kill it. Where are y'all? Where are y'all? Yeah, 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 kill it. We went out to the community. We did a parade. And the young people did an outstanding job I want us to get a lesson from them because because uh, we didn't get there all of a sudden for you see as a matter of fact maybe a year or almost two years ago the drum corps had been decimated 
because our previous jump drum corps, we, they were pretty doggone good. They were talented. But one thing we didn't do with that drum corps is that we didn't cross train. So everybody had their own spot, all right? They were comfortable. We ain't played, whoever played cymbal, they played it and they played it well. The ones that played the tenors, they played it, they played it well. Quad, same, drum, bass, same thing. But what happened when they left, it left us crippled, almost dead. As a matter of fact, the only way we were able to play during that time period is if we get somebody else from outside to come in. And so I said, ooh, this is not good. Because the young people love playing the drums for Jesus. Some of you don't make that connection. But I tell you, a drum corps is a ministry. It is a ministry. You don't hear the parents when they come up to me to tell me, thank you so much for having this drum corps. My child was going in the wrong direction. And this drum corps kept them. You don't, you weren't there when they were all trying to play the individualized beats and it sounded chaotic. You weren't there. You get the pristine plane when they're up front. Uh-huh. Well, here it was. And we took a hiatus from playing drum corps because there was one section in the drum corps that was pertinent to drum corps, which was the snares. I made good attempts to try to get somebody to transition over. And they looked at me and said, mm -mm. I like this drum. Talking about comfort zone. Talking about comfort zone. So as time went on when we weren't having drum corps, I would kept being asked, when, when is the drum corps going to start? I don't know. We need a snare. So the young lady I was trying to convince, Crystal, who are, who are you, Crystal? 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 Crystal told me no. In the beginning, remember that, Crystal? <laughs> remember that? I said, I said, Crystal, I said, I said, Crystal, you have the ability to play the snares. God has gifted you. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Can't push him too hard, right? So one day, Crystal came. Mr. Joey? When are we going to play drum corps? Miss Crystal, when are you going to snare? And Miss Crystal said, I'll do it. I'll do it. That kicked off the drum corps once again. It revived again. Crystal was over there because it's uncomfortable because you're moving from one thing that you know very well. You transition over to something that you might not know quite as well, but it takes hard work to get up to speed. How many of you guys like to be uncomfortable? Is that what keep you from doing something different from God? There was Crystal, where she was playing her heart out, and, 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 and boy, every time she would just get better and better, and, and, and you know, y'all saying, man, he's looking like a proud parent. They all my kids. I'm telling you, they all my kids. She kept getting better, and I kept encouraging her, 
kept encouraging. And then, 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 then our, our quads, our quads, they left because they grew up a little bit. And so, so, so I said, I said, Adriel, Adriel, you going you gonna to play these quads? So Adriel said, okay, yeah. Adriel's a little bit more confident with his, <laughs> he's a little bit more confident. So Adriel, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Man, Adriel picked it up like this. I said, oh, yeah, we, we're, we're getting back in business. And so we began to add additional people onto it. And I had this, I had this little bitty fellow, this little bitty fellow. He would come to practice now. Now, drunk, Pat Finders, Pat Finders, we have Pat Finders tomorrow, registration tomorrow, be out there. Okay. Usually, drum corps is for Pat Bond. This little bitty fella, he would come on out there. And man, one day they was practicing out there. This little fella, they had some cymbals right there. He came on, he said, Uncle Joey, can I hold them cymbals? <laughs> I said, McKees, yeah. Go ahead, hold the symbol. Before I knew it, he was back there playing, marching. I said, wow, wow. Building up. McKees went back there. So I said, look at Morgan. I said, Morgan, we need some more quads. Come on over to quads. Because I asked somebody else about quads, and they were going back and forth. Yes, no, yes, no. But guess what? The yes, no is in quads too, Tati. Tati's in quads. So we had another one over there. He was trying to play the drums, the bass drum. He was trying, but, but I could see the frustration on his face. Yeah. Ah, how you do this? And Lord impressed upon me. Put him on it where he do it, does it like this. And boy, you should have seen him last week like this. Junior, Junior was there marching. I'm talking about making a change, moving from what's uncomfortable to, to uncomfortable to uncomfortable. Are you ready? We're about to have a pill coming up. We're about to have an appeal coming up. Because every time Jesus went to minister, he did it. It was all about seeking and saving souls that are lost. The problem that we have is very similar to the demoniac. Uh-oh. <laughs> Woo. See, the problem is the demoniac had many. You and I might have one, two, three, which make us feel a little bit more. I ain't, I ain't. But any demon within us that's causing a separation from our God, our Savior, Jesus. And when we carry around demons, when we carry around demons, It's hard for us to seek and save the lost. Are y'all with me? Are you ready? We can learn something from the demonic. 
man. When he saw Jesus, what did he do? Ran to Jesus. And fell at his feet and allowed Jesus to take care of those demons. What were the demons? Demon of fear, demons of uh, 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 all types of demons. Demons of complacency, demons, we have them. Jesus can take care of them. He calls for us to come to lay ourselves on the altar. Each and every time we could, we, could, we could come to Jesus, we should come to Jesus. Because every time he fixes one problem, there's another one usually rears ugly head. Let me say, every time he fixes a problem in me, there's another one that rears up within me. And I need him each and every time to take it away. I need him each and every time to give me understanding, learning of why it is that I'm going through it. Sometimes I would never know, but I could tell you every time he puts me through something, I come out better on the other side. Are you ready? The appeal song is going to play. God has spoken to my heart and called me to look inside of myself. Joey, are you ready? Are you ready to go meet the needs of these people? Do you have concern that night after night you will be present? Or, or, or is it just too late at night? I got to work in the morning. It is I that give you the strength to wake up in the morning. It is I that sustains you. It is me that gave you that job. But, 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 Jesus, let me be honest with you. I am uncomfortable out of your comfort zone so that we can go out and we can reach people in this community, in this world. It's no longer just about Baytown anymore. What is about everybody who is streaming? Are you ready? The Peel song is going to play, sing, they, they're going to sing their hearts out for Jesus. Jesus has spoken to you. Here's the altar. And I'm the first one here. Oh 
altar again set me on fire set me on fire help me sing I have in these hands and multiply God all that I am and find my heart on the altar Set me on fire. Here I am, God, with my arms wide open. Pouring out my life, gracefully broken. My heart stands in awe of your name, your mighty love stands strong to the end, you will fulfill your purpose in me, you won't forsake, you will be with me, you will be with me. I'm holding nothing back. I'm holding nothing back. I surrender. I surrender. To your will, to your will. I surrender. Take control of my life. I surrender.
is fully broken. Isn't that the best way to be broken gracefully? Which means Jesus in your brokenness is ready to carry you through. When Jesus was there with the, with the gentlemen, and they came back to the, the, the people who saw what had happened. And, 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 and then they went and run to the city and they were telling everybody what had happened. And we were feeding all the 2,000 swine and, and they just ran off the cliff when Jesus told the demons to get out. So they went and told everybody, and then people come back, came back, came back, came back, looking, 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 see what was done. And when they came back, they found Jesus sitting with the man. The man was in his right mind. Jesus had delivered him and put him in his right mind. The good news today is that Jesus wants to put us in our right mind. Do you want it? They came up, they surveyed the man. And they began to become scared at what they saw. This man who was running around, lost his mind in his right mind. And the congregation began to pray. Guess what they prayed? They prayed, Jesus, get on out of here. Jesus, who had just delivered this man, they came and they prayed, Jesus, you got to go. You, you got to go. Why you came for him and you have all these people? So Jesus got in his boat and when he turned around, guess who he saw? The one he delivered. Because he wanted to be with Jesus. That's the right frame of mind, isn't it? Isn't it? But Jesus told him something different. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Go back and tell others what I did for you. And tell them what I could do for them. That's what ministry is about. And that's what Jesus came to do. And that's what he's calling you and I to do. Are you ready? Are you ready? Some of you guys may have been coming here over and over and over. The song mentioned about we need to put our hearts on the altar. When we come to the altar, guess what? There's a fire that Jesus can give each one of us if we come to the altar. That's an option today. I don't know where you are. 
There's some people that came here for the first time and did not hear about this Jesus. And just like John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. You've seen Jesus today for the first time. This is your opportunity. Ministry is not starting next week or two weeks from now. Ministry is today. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart and come to him. Is there another one coming to the altar of sacrifice to lay yourself down? One is here. Is there two? Is there two? Where are you? You know God has spoken to you. That thing you're battling with, bring it up here. Let Jesus take care of it. Demons of procrastination, demons of laziness, demons that God wants to get rid of. Bring them up here. Are you ready? Are you ready? in the ball game to be playing around bring it to Jesus come to the altar lay yourself down on altar sacrifice allow him to restore flame in you that has burnt out somebody needs you somebody needs to hear the sacrifice that Jesus made for you in order for them to be saved where are you more time where are you father you're so good to us Jesus goes out of his way to save that's my testimony here thank you Jesus for dying for coming to walk into situations to deliver your people. Father, you have spoken today in, in, in a mighty and rich way. I, Father, first, first and foremost, you spoke to me to get this message ready. And, I, and I'm here, Father, laying myself on the altar so that I can be set aflame for you. Father, there's individuals that came up. You know their individual needs. There's demons, Father, that we carry around. We want them to be cast out today. And we want to be in our right minds. We want to, to have a walk even closer with you. And Father, as we leave this place, we're asking that you give us the power to the ability, Father, to be able to recognize your calling on our hearts and that we will have the power to go out to do your will. And Father, there's individuals that may have not made a decision today uh, coming up here physically. But in their hearts, Father, they're struggling. I pray that you still draw nigh and you work upon them. That whatever it is, Lord, that you will help them through and give them the strength. And we'll be careful, Father, to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. 
We thank you. Amen. your name. We just want to lift your name on high because you have spoke to our hearts. Help each and every one of us to surrender our hearts to you. Where else can we go to? Who else can we go to but to you? Thank you for your man servant that have presented this message. We all need you, Lord. All the demonic spirit that is lingering in our family, in our home, in our church, Lord, we ask that you will take it away, but we have to surrender to you and call on you for help. Thank you, Lord, as we are about to be dismissed. Let us never be dismissed from your presence, but always be with us. Bless your people. Bless us as we go in out of the coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Thank you, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a happy Sabbath. I am saved by your mercy. I've been transformed by your love. You're my glory and a lifter of my head, strong deliverer. You find my battles in my stead. You will preserve me by your mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 I am saved, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.